Several years ago, we bought a 1993 StarCraft camper. There were a couple of warning signs that the roof was taking a little bit of water, but I will tell you, we had no idea what we were in for until we started taking it apart. We ended up detaching and rebuilding most of the roof. In this video, I'll give you an overview of what we did to rebuild it, as well as how we made it watertight so it could be used for years to come. There were a couple of warning signs I should have paid attention to when I first purchased this camper. I should have paid attention to the fact that the bottom had been painted over by the previous owner and it was already starting to peel away, especially on the spots where there had been um, vinyl decals. They clearly used some sort of latex paint and it was not adhering. They just wanted to do a quick fix to make it look better. Warning sign number one. If you're looking on how I repainted this camper in a much more durable but still cheap way, feel free to check out the video linked above. Warning number two was the vinyl trim insert was completely flaking away or gone in some places. What this means is that the water can go into that channel where all the screws are, which is only going to make it easier for water to penetrate through those screw holes and right into the wood of your camper. Warning sign number three, there were quite a few rusted screw heads, and if the screw head is rusted, it probably means the base of the screw is rusted, which probably means that you've got water in your roof. Warning sign number four, there were some places that had been siliconed over. One, this means that there had been some damage that they had to fix, and two, I never put silicone on my roof, especially after having to fix this disaster. I've got a much better way, which you'll see later on in the video. And warning sign number five, possibly the most embarrassing of them all, is there was a panel attached to the ceiling on this side of the camper. I don't have a good picture of it, but when I asked the owners about it, they said that they had had professional repairs done because at one point it had taken water, but now it's fixed. I'm dumb for believing them. Thankfully, I only paid $400 for the thing. Clearly, what they told me was not true because as soon as I took that panel down and saw what the roof looked like, I knew I was going to have to do some major repairs to the entire roof structure. So that's what we're here for. Let's start taking apart this roof so we can see how bad the water damage is and then start rebuilding it. The first step is to remove the metal trim. You'll do this by first taking out the vinyl insert and then using a handheld screwdriver to try and unscrew the screws. I recommend a handheld over a drill here because the drill tends to strip out screws, especially when they're already rusty or um, even deteriorating from the water. Screws that are completely rusted down the shaft or that are falling apart are a huge sign that you've got lots of water damage inside. Use a metal scraper to pry off the trim. You wanna to try to keep it intact and not bend it because we preferably will reuse it when you rebuild your roof. You'll be left with butyl tape and probably lots of it. Again, use a flat scraper to scrape off as much as you can and then use a hairdryer or some mineral spirits to get off the excess. After removing the metal trim, you're gonna have a much better idea of how bad the water damage actually is. In our case, once it was off, we could see that water had gotten into every seam along the roof. The next step is to remove the gasket from underneath the lip of the roof and then to just unscrew that metal bracket that goes all the way around. Now this side looked bad, but the other side was awful. Let me show you what we found. Basically, once we removed the metal trim, the backboard was falling off. It, the only thing holding it was the canvas. So I quickly detached that from the inside and the backboard just fell right off because it had completely rotted away. You can see between those two pieces of aluminum that the plywood had taken water and was completely rotted and that board was so heavy because of how waterlogged it was. Before we can get this roof off, we need to remove the canvas. Mine was attached with screws and a couple staples um, over a metal trim. Just make sure to take pictures of what the interior and exterior looks like of your camper so you can remember where all the pieces go when you're putting it back together. Now we're ready to detach the roof. In my case, each lifting bracket held the roof on with two large bolts. We detached those and then lifted the roof over to a set of two sawhorses that was next to the camper so we could start to take it apart and rebuild it. We started detaching the sides and front and back of the roof right away and that was just held on with screws and now that I'm thinking about it the sides may have only been held on with staples and not even screws and in some places it was already falling off. All the sides and the front and back were rotted and could not be saved, but we did save them to use as templates to cut out our new pieces of wood, which I'll talk about in a second. Before we can rebuild the sides of the roof, we first had to tackle the frame. Obviously, if the frame of the roof is rotted, the sides aren't gonna have anything to attach into. 
After the sides are removed, we can easily see how bad the damage is to the frame of the roof. In our case, some of the perimeter was rotted away and in other parts it was semi-rotted. We ended up just replacing all of that perimeter wood. In the places where the wood was rotted, it was easy. It just fell right off or could be pulled off with the staples. In the places where the wood was still intact, we had to remove it and detach it from the piece of plywood that is on the top of the camper ceiling, so the bottom of the roof. It was stuck on pretty well, so a flat edge pried it away in some places and then we were able to remove the perimeter wood. In other cases, I had to use my circular saw set at a quarter inch depth just to cut away that plywood and then it removed the perimeter wood and the plywood all at once. We're gonna cover up this mess later when we finish off the ceiling. So I wasn't really worried about how it looked. I just needed to get those perimeter boards replaced with new wood. Thankfully, once our perimeter boards were removed, we saw that our interior boards were still intact and had good wood that we could screw those perimeter boards right into. If this wasn't the case, we would have had to remove the aluminum from the entire roof and rebuilt the entire frame, set the foam back in, and then put the aluminum back on top. But because our interior wood was intact, we could only replace the perimeter boards and screw into the good wood on the inside. Now it's time to rebuild the sides of the roof. We made two different decisions here that could be done in different ways. I'll explain to you what we did, but you could go a different route as well. For the two long sides of the camper, we decided to completely replace the aluminum sheets that covered those sides. We could have reused the sheets that were there, but there were a ton of holes from staples and screws, and so we were just trying to minimize water coming in later and decided to just replace it with aluminum trim coil, which you can find at any home improvement store. It's about twice as much as it was when we did this project about seven or eight years ago, so decide what's best for your camper. I'll put a link in the description with the exact product we used. We decided to wrap the aluminum around the top and the sides to hopefully have less water get in. Uh, you can see originally the trim went flush to the edges of the plywood. Um, like you can see in this original video, we just thought wrapping it around would help with some of that water getting in. We attached the aluminum to the board with contact adhesive. Uh, I've also heard Gorilla Glue works for this really well too. And then we attached the sideboards to the lifting brackets. Now we didn't wanna screw through the aluminum to attach the front and back of the roof. So instead we routed out a small lip that we were able to put the backboard into and then use trim screws at an angle along with wood glue to screw in those front and back boards. The other alteration we decided to make from the original roof was to use one inch boards for the sides instead of three fourths inch plywood. One benefit to this is you can purchase 12 foot long boards, which eliminates the need to join two pieces of plywood together to create the long sides of the roof. It also gave us a finished look on the inside of the camper without the need to add or wrap it in aluminum or do anything else to the plywood. One of the drawbacks to using one inch boards is you will have to route out about a fourth of an inch channel around the perimeter of the roof so that the metal trim will fit on the underside of the roof that holds the gasket. The other drawback is that it is gonna widen out the roof very slightly on the two sides of the camper, but this didn't affect the way our gasket sealed, so it worked well for us. Now it's time to attach the top of the roof back to the sides. We just lifted it over the entire camper and then used trim screws to attach it to the sides of the roof. Every time we put in a screw, I used a little bit of uh, lap sealant um, on the screw and it kind of just oozes in and helps to seal up that to avoid water damage. Then we wrap the aluminum around the front and the back and use contact adhesive again to secure it into place. Now we can reattach the canvas. Make sure the distance between the roof and the track that holds in your canvas is the same as it was before you took it out. So be sure to measure that before you actually detach it. My camper seal gasket had to be replaced. Unfortunately, because my camper is quite old, I could not find the right camper seal to fit into my channel. So I ended up buying this one and cutting off the base. Then I use this 3M gasket adhesive. This stuff is amazing. That seal is not going anywhere. To seal up all those little holes in the camper and all of the seams, I used Eternabond tape. 
I have used this now on three different campers and it is amazing. Don't settle for the knockoff brand. There is a difference. I would highly recommend a turn on tape. The oldest camper I used it on was eight years ago and the tape is still holding very strong, but I'm gonna share with you a couple of tricks to make it work right because sometimes it can go wrong. First, be sure to clean the surface really well. Eternabond tape will not stick to silicone, so make sure all of that is removed. It will stick to Dicor lap sealant though, so you could apply it right over that. To remove the backing on the tape, hold both ends of it and run your fingers back and forth really quickly. This will remove the backing from it. Now work in small sections here. This stuff is super sticky and if it gets stuck on itself, there is no pulling it apart. Undo the backing in a small section, lay it down firmly on the camper and get out any air bubbles and then move to the next section, remove the backing and continue applying it. This tape adheres with pressure, so you can use a roller to press down on the tape or I have used the curve edge of scissors or other material to put extra pressure. You have to make sure that you're not puncturing the tape in any way and you're applying pressure. You can also use the palm of your hand. You just have to kind of press pretty hard to make sure that it is adhered well. Eternabond tape works perfectly to seal up holes and cracks. The edges of this are secure and they're not going anywhere. There's no water getting past this tape. Now the trick to Eternabond tape is when you need to overlap it at a place like this, it's super important that you use something like Dicor lap sealant at these corner joints. If you don't, water can slowly seep in through those edges and down then into the underneath the tape, it's gonna mess up the integrity of the tape and it's ultimately going to get into your camper roof. This is the biggest mistake I've seen made on plenty of YouTube videos and also on a camper that I purchased where someone had put a turn on tape around their roof vent. You have to make sure to seal up those overlap edges. They even list that on the Eternabon website. I decided to put Eternabon tape on all of my roof edges as well, which went under the trim. This was an added measure that may not be necessary, but I wanted to make sure there was no more water that was going to get into that roof. After that Eternabon tape was on the edges, I could just apply the trim as normal with butyl tape underneath. The tape was applied three years before this video was shot, and you can see it's holding up perfectly. It's been seven years since it's applied, and it is still holding up really well. It does get dirty. I obviously didn't clean it before shooting this video, so that's just one thing to keep in mind. The only upkeep is really making sure that you add Dicor lap sealant when needed. I actually refreshed the Dicor lap sealant on all of those tape joints right after this video was shot. It was about time after three years. Even though our roof is entirely rebuilt and watertight, I still have to deal with this mess on the ceiling. I ended up keeping that Luan after it completely dried out and decided to do a cosmetic facelift instead. I'll link a full tutorial for what we used in the description, as well as tons of other ideas of how to give your camper ceiling a facelift. Although it may have been a mistake to buy this camper in the first place, I'm sure glad I did because I have a totally new camper that looks amazing and I learned a whole lot in the process. Be sure to check out my other camper renovation videos and follow for all things camping, recipes, renovations, and hacks to make camping as comfortable as home.